Well, a very good afternoon, everybody, and happy Tuesday. I hope everyone had a wonderful Labor Day weekend. Thanks so much for joining us today for a webinar I know you'll find interesting and useful. My name is Sandy Elson, and on behalf of the Travel Professional Community and TravelProfessionalNews.com, I want to welcome all of you and thank you for taking time out of your day to join us today. We are so happy to welcome our host, Uniglobe Travel Center. Our speaker is Summer Corbett, Sales and Marketing Manager for Uniglobe. Summer graduated from Florida State University in 2008 with degrees in international business, finance, and human resource management. At FSU, her passion for travel was ignited while studying marketing in Tokyo, Japan, and hospitality management in Laysan, Switzerland. She fed that passion by traveling the world after college and has now conquered all seven continents. In 2011, Summer joined Uniglobe Travel Center as an independent agent to pursue a business in group adventure travel. Most recently, she worked as an assistant marketing manager in the creative marketing department at CNN. Before joining Uniglobe Travel Center at the beginning of 2016 to manage marketing and recruiting. Summer's topic today is DIY do-it-yourself marketing material for beginners, canva.com tutorial. Before we get started, please remember that you are all muted, but if you have questions as we go along, you can type them in in the question area on the right-hand side of your screen. At the end of Summer's presentation, we will get to as many questions as we can. Also at the end of the presentation, Summer will be giving away a $50 gift card to one lucky travel agent who has attended this entire webinar. More about the giveaway later, but just as a hint, you may want to take some notes. So let's get right to this wonderful webinar. Welcome, Summer. Hello. Thank you, Sandy. I appreciate it. Um, I'm excited to be here. Just want to do a little bit of a webcam to start with because I think it's a little nicer to put kind of a face to the voice. So. What I'm going to do with you guys today is show you what canva.com is and it's basically a way to create marketing materials without having any graphic design experience. So I am not an artistic person. I don't know anything. I don't know how to use Photoshop. Um, so what I use for all of the marketing materials, um, if you ever see any of them from Uniglobe, uh, Uniglobe Travel Center, then it probably was made by me using this program. Um, and I kind of am self-taught. It does take a little bit of time just playing with it, but you get used to it really easy. So what I'm going to do is give you a quick tutorial um, of what we can do, and then I'm going to go back through and actually make a few things with you. I'm not using any PowerPoints. We're going to do everything live because I think um, that'll just make it a little more organic, and I can show you how easy it is to do it yourself. So um, I'm going to turn my screen off, and Sandy, can you see everything fine? Yes, I see your screen. Perfect. Okay, so just to start with, um, the name of this is Canva, C-A-N-V-A right here. So canva.com. So all you have to do is type in canva.com into your browser and it will pop up. Um, you do have to create a profile. Um, the nice thing about Canva is it is free um, when you first start. So you don't ever have to pay if you don't want to. Um, but there are some options, some additional options, if you do a monthly subscription. So I do have the monthly subscription. Um, um, can you hear me all right? Yeah, cool as well. Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, sorry, I thought I heard something. So um, I do have the monthly subscription, and I know there are a few things that I can do with that monthly subscription that you can't do. Um, with the free version. I don't know if I'll be able to remember all of them as we go along. So if you're playing with it and you run into something that doesn't work like I showed you, it's probably because you have the free version. Um, one of the main things that you can do by having the um, pro version, it's called. So it's called Canva Pro. It's $12.95 um, a month. No, I do not get anything from that by telling you. Just wanted you to be aware. Um, so it's $12.95 a month for Canva Pro. And that basically allows you to upload different fonts. So if you have fonts already for your brand, if you have certain colors, like if you have color codes that you want to use in your brand, you can have those uploaded so that you don't have to search for them every single time. Um, it also lets you automatically um, change dimensions on something. So if you've made something one size and you want to change it to a new size and just make, adap make adaptions based on the size, you can do that with Pro. Everything else, um, you 
probably should be able to do with the free version. So I would say start with that and then play with it until you outgrow it. Um, so just to give you a little bit of tour, a little bit of a tour of what we can do. Um, when you log into Canva, the first thing you're going to see is their main page and it has all of these create designs that you can create. And I'm going to walk you through those. But the first thing I want you to see is if you click over here on all your designs, this will show you all the things that you've already made. So as you can see, I've made, this is our pamphlet for when we're at trade shows. Um, this is an ad we just did in Little Black Book. Um, this is a host agency comparison that I actually did for internal purposes. Um, some ads, I think we have some of these actually running on, um, on um, the OGS, a few of the OGS sites. So this is just gonna show you everything that you've done. As you can see, I've kind of made, made a lot of things um, over the last few years. You also can create folders um, and I'll show you that, but basically I have different folders, like I can do just my ads. So you can see just the ads in here. Um, I also have folders that have just logos, for instance. So it's easy to organize so that you can keep things tracked. But the easiest thing is just kind of go to all your designs and see what you've been working on most recently. Um, but let me show you how to kind of get started with the design. So we're gonna hit create a design. Um, we don't want to do custom. Well, you can do custom dimensions. So if you know something that you really want, um, that, where you know you need certain dimensions, you can type them in here. You can do it by pixels. You can do it by inches, millimeters, or centimeters. So if there's like a something you're fulfilling for like a magazine or a newspaper, probably not a newspaper because that's pretty much black and white, but if it's like an online magazine or an ad, you can put that in um, right away. So you also can go to templates, which is really where we want to start. Um, but just to give you an idea, just so that you don't get confused, when you first start at canva.com, it's already going to show you the templates. So this is the first page. These are all the ones you can choose from. And that's your designs or you can create a design. So there's different ways to navigate. On the front page, you can see your designs or you can start with creating a design or if you're already on your designs, you can click between templates and designs. So we're gonna go to create a design. And kind of what I want you to understand about why this is so easy is because you don't have to reinvent the wheel. They have thousands of templates for all different types of marketing materials. So really all you have to do is pick a template you like and just basically change the text, change the colors, change the images. Um, you might find one you really like and don't really need to change anything. So I'm just going to give you a little, a brief tutorial of the kind of things that they um, can do. So the different templates that you have, and then we're actually going to go in and make some. So for instance, um, you can make your own business card. So I'll just click on this and show you. If you want to design your own business card, sorry, my Wi-Fi is a little slow. These are all, uh, it's got front and back. So if you hover over it, it shows you the front and the back. See, it's flipping through. Same thing here. So you can go through all of these. They've got tons. They kind of keep going and going. And you really can just find one that you like. Um, let's see. Sometimes up here in templates, you can actually search and it might show one. So let's see. Travel. That doesn't have a very good one. That's fine. I'll show you on another one. They have more travel options. Um, so basically, I would just go through find one that you like and then you can start editing from there. But we'll get to that later. You can go back up here to home. And that's going to take you back to um, the where you can create designs. The one thing I will I want you to notice is whenever it opens a new one, it actually opens it in a new tab. So when I clicked on business card, it actually opened it in a new tab up here. So if you can't find your way back, you can always just go back to the previous tab that you were on. So these are some of the things that can, it can do. You can make postcards for your clients um, if you want to make flyers. Also with social media, if you want to do Facebook posts. So if you want to make a post where you can put it um, on your Facebook page, if you want to make a cover photo for your Facebook page, again, all of Instagram posts, all of these are already the size that they need to be. Um, if you're making letterhead, um, there's a little, uh, it's kind of hard to see, but there's an arrow right here. So there's actually more under documents. So if you need to create an invoice, you can choose 
once it loads, you can choose the style of invoice that you like. Um, you will have to come in and physically type it in um, each time, but if you want to use this as an invoice as an invoice template, you can. I'm just going to exit out of this tab because uh, it just creates a new tab. Under personal, um, again, th this is actually really helpful. Like I use this for like friends, baby shower invitations, so it's actually really versatile. You're, you'll probably find ways to use it um, when you don't even don't even need it for work. Um, with the planner, I actually help someone make a packing list for someone for their trip. So you can kind of repurpose some of the things in here, like a planner, you can turn into a packing list. Uh, again, they have postcards under here. Uh, let's see what else they have. Yeah, so you probably don't need to make a CD cover. We'll just skip over that one. Same thing. Um, we'll just look and see what they have. Education, probably don't need a lot of these, but just so you know they're there. Marketing is probably going to be the category you're going to use a lot. So if you need to make a logo, I'll just click on this one and show you. Um, this one, I think you can search travel and it has has some options. So up here where it says logo, we'll type in travel. So this is probably people who are brand new or want, want to redesign. You can look and see what the different options are that already have travel. Like let's say you like this one, <coughs> excuse me. And you can go and change the font, the color, the size. Um, and again, I'll show you that once we're done looking at, at the options, but that's a very easy one to do. Um, flyers, which will actually build a flyer, business cards. This one's really cool. I'm not gonna build it just cause it'll take a little bit more time cause there's more content and I don't have like content to build a whole brochure. But this one I think is really cool, especially if you do any kind of booths and you have um, you know, a table where you want more than just a one page flyer, you can actually build these trifold um, brochures. So you can see like this one, for instance, um, it's got the front and you can change everything around in here again, colors, photos, um, and then it's got the back so that when it, it's uh, going to be printed on both sides, obviously. So when you have the trifold, it's got um, everything printed on both sides. So you would edit the front and you would edit the back. Um, but again, there's lots of different styles. Just choose the one you like. Even these are kind of cool. They've already got it positioned for you where it kind of goes into the, the other column. Um, looks really cool printed. So this one I think is a really, a really cool one to play with. Um, I'm just not going to do it today because I don't, I don't have all the content for it. Um, what else do we have? Ticket, if you want to come, if you want to like create like fake tickets, like as an invitation for like a cruise night or something, this is, you can use this here. Um, if you want to put together a newsletter, uh, you can do that here. Lots of other ones, coupons, you can create coupons if you're off, if you have any kind of special offers, um, a certificate, marketing has a lot um, of different ones. So events, again, we'll just click through to see what they have. Um, yep, that's about it. And then ads. So this is more if you want to do, if you're doing digital ads. So obviously I do digital ads with um, the Ox and um, lots of other different sites. So I might create um, leaderboard ads. Um, the one thing I would say that I don't really like with Canva is with Instagram ads and Facebook ads, Facebook penalizes you if you're doing a paid ad, Facebook will penalize you for having a lot of text on your ad. So for the most part, if I'm creating an ad and I might do it on here, um, I'll just click on it and show you. I would choose something that is mostly image. Um, even this is almost too much text. Like mostly image, just a little bit of text because you're gonna get penalized the more text you have. Um, a lot of times I put just an image and no text on it. So that's the one thing just to be careful of if you're doing Facebook ads. Okay, so now that you know what's there, um, let's make a few things. So the first thing I'm gonna do, if I can find it again, is I'm just gonna make a logo with you just because that's a pretty easy one to start with. And then I think we'll do a flyer after that and get a, you know, get a little bit more, more advanced. So let's start with travel, choose a travel logo. And see how we're, uh, it's got these um, tabs on the side. So right now we're in templates. That's why we're, we're searching the templates of this size. Um, so let's choose, um, let's find one we like. Okay, let's say this one. Okay, 
Um, now, this has a background of like the whole logo is the square. So I don't particularly like that this is the whole logo. I really just like that this green part is the logo. So this is a background color. And you can tell when you click on it, it's got this blue ring around it, which shows you what's highlighted. And that corresponds to this right here. So as you can see, it says background color. So we're gonna click on that. And we're just, it has default colors here. And we're gonna change it to white. But the one thing I wanted to show you is this is when you buy the Canva Pro, the paid version, this is what's basically always gonna show up, your primary color. So these are our brand colors that I've already uploaded. So I can just click on them every time. If I didn't have the logos already uploaded, see how that has like a, a hex number it's called, the FF9900. I would have to go in here, hit the plus button, change the color, what was it, FF9900, is that it? And then I could change it. So that's a little bit annoying. Um, so if you're using the same colors every time, I would recommend just paying the 12 95 um, and you can also have different fonts and things but right now we're just going to change the background to white okay and we're going to make this our logo so let's say we don't like the mountains so what we can actually do is you can highlight it so the blue is highlighted and you can hit the delete button over here or you can hit the delete button on your computer so we're just going to hit delete and let's say we want a palm tree instead so over here, um, it's actually under, I believe it's under photos, unless they just changed it. They might've just changed it. Let me just try, yeah. So it used to be that photos and um, graphics, like uh, animated, not animated, uh, illustrated graphics were in one category. Now photos have their own section. And so we're gonna go into elements and we're gonna search for palm tree. So this is gonna show you all these different palm trees. So let's just choose one, say we like that. Okay, so again, this is highlighted. Um, you can grab it and move it around. We can also make it tiny by grabbing the corners. You wouldn't really want to, but you can rotate it if you need to. Um, in other cases, you might wanna rotate. So it works probably like what you've used on, like if you've ever used PowerPoint, same concepts, you can drag and minimize things. So let's say we put a palm tree here, okay. But green against green, not an awesome look. So let's change the color that's in the background. So as you can see, as I'm, as I'm just hovering my mouse over these different things, you'll see that they get the blue outline. That's showing a different element that you can change. So for right now, we want, this element, so we'll click on it, which is the whole thing. Um, the line in between it, we're gonna change it to white. And the green, um, let's change this to a purple because it's my favorite color. Um, actually, let's change it to blue so it looks like the sky, perfect. Um, so let's say you're an agency and you, so you wanna keep, you like this established. So let's say 1987 can stay, um, but we wanna call this, uh, a different name. So once you've highlighted something that has text, if you double click in it, it'll let you basically adjust the text inside. So you can highlight the whole thing, or you can just, once the cursor's in there, you see how the, just like when you're writing in like a Word document, it has that cursor there. So we're going to, actually, we've been in trouble. We'll go back and call it Palm Travel instead. Um, so we'll leave everything else. But another thing you can edit is like, let's say you don't like this font. So sometimes it's a little glitchy. What I always recommend is just highlighting the entire text just to make sure that everything is changing. Sometimes if you're in there, it'll like change just the word that your cursor's on and not all of it. So just to be safe, um, highlight everything that you want in there. And this is where you can change the text. So let's say we like this text instead. Okay, um, and we want it to be a little bit bigger because that made it smaller. So here's where you can change the font. That one's 30, let's see what 36 looks like. So 36 is a little too big. Um, we can change it, but just keep in mind, if you were to make this wider, then it would fit. So we don't wanna make it wider. We wanna keep it where it was. 
So we want to move this down to a 32. Okay, so that fits. Um, so some other things that you can do is you wouldn't do it in here, but this is the alignment of the text. So again, very much like Microsoft Word, if you click on it, you saw up here, everything is to the left, left aligned. That's uh, supposed to fill it, I think. Oh, that's the center one, yeah. So it'll, you just click through it till you get the one you want. In the right alignment, we want center alignment. But it, see how it's a little off, like this is a little too far on this side compared to this. So what you do is you usually, especially with the smaller ones, you have to put your cursor on the blue line. I made it a little bit difficult for you because it's blue on blue, but hopefully you can see it. Um, and you, once you see those that cross, the arrows crossing, that means you can drag it. So once you click on it, we can move it around, but see how these lines pop up? Canva does this really cool thing where it helps you align it. So we're looking, there we go. That means it's smack dab in the center of the logo or of the of the element that it's on top of. And then this will show you alignment like top and bottom. So that's the very middle of the logo, but we don't want it there because we don't want it to run to the palm tree. So just keep in mind when you're dragging things around that that's why those purple pinkish um, lines show up is to help you align things together. Um, so yeah, this is now you've basically made a logo. Um, I will also show you if you wanted things to be lowercase, you can hit the lowercase button or you can hit the uppercase button. So if you've typed something out and you think it might look better um, in uppercase, then you can just like hit this button and see how it looks and always move it back. So they've got some, some easy things. Um, there's a few more elements that I'm gonna show you, but there's not uh, a ton to do in here. So we're gonna move on to making a flyer, which will have some more elements and I can show you how everything works. The one thing I do wanna show you now and I'll show you again is once you're done with it, you can up here, see once I moved my, my cursor over it, it has the ability to change the name. So this essentially would be your file name. It's the file name within Canva. And when you download it onto your computer, it's the file name. So we're gonna call it Palm Travel Logo. So that way that's saved. Um, so you can hit the download button and it gives you um, different file types. So PNG, uh, which is just a, an image type. That's kind of the one that's suggested. JPEG, which just is like a smaller, easier to send. Um, but really there's not any reason with these file sizes that you really need a JPEG, you can just do a PNG. Um, another cool thing about PNG that I would recommend is if you hit PM, PNG, you wanna click transparent background. Because if you don't, then this white square is gonna show up as part of your logo. And what we want is just this to show up your logo. So we want the back to essentially be invisible or transparent. Again, this is a pro option. So you have to have the, um, the Canva Pro subscription, but you can make a transparent background so that when you download it, you hit the download button. I'll just do it right now so you can see how it works. I hit the download button. It's preparing my design. And then it downloaded onto my computer right here. So it'll go into my downloads on my computer. So just keep in mind, if you don't want the whole square to show up or if your logo is not an entire square, um, you would want the to use the transparent background option. Um, when we do flyers, we'll probably do one of the PDFs uh, instead. So, okay, we have gotten through a logo, which is a pretty easy one. I'm just gonna exit out of that tab because what you'll see is if we go back to like our homepage and refresh it. Um, and we have to go to all of our designs. You'll see it saves automatically. So it saves for you like every, I think 10 or 15 seconds. Um, so you can hit a save button, but basically it's automatically saving it for you as you go along. So that's why I could just exit out of that tab and here it is right here. Um, and if I wanna go back into it, I would just hit edit. I don't wanna go back into it though. So let me just exit out of it. Okay. So now this one's a little more involved. We're gonna build a flyer. And this is, the great thing is like, this is gonna be, you can download it as an image. So if you wanted to put it on something digital or you can download it as a PDF, if you wanna get it printed. So the first thing we need to do is probably pick um, a template. So let's find one that we think 
maybe looks nice for travel. Let's try and let's type in travel and see what happens. Okay, these are nice. I like these. Um, so these are fun. Why don't we try this one right here? It'd be really nice if you already have <laughs> one going to Iceland, um, then you wouldn't have to edit much. But we're basically going to take this and turn it into um, like a cruise promotion, for instance. So let's find, let's just find a cruise promotion. Um, my parents always cruise on NCL. My dad is a creature of habit and he went on NCL one time and he refuses to try anything else. So um, here we go. We've got a Labor Day sale. Um, and this is basically what's going on. So what we're going to do is basically just take this information and put it into the flyer. So what actually might make sense for me to do is I'm going to create a new window so that I can put it off to the side and kind of read and type at the same time. So let me just make this. This is another fun trick is just to kind of make two small um, windows so that you have a little more have a little more room and you can don't have to click back and forth. So let's go to our untitled and unentitled design. And you might say like, that's too small. I can't, I can't see anything. Um, well, you can make room by hiding this. And also you can change the zoom. So like, especially I use this, if there's something really tiny on there that I'm trying to move, you can move this, you can make it 200%, see where you're really zoomed in. So it's easier for you to, to grab things or, put your cursor where it needs to go. Um, you can see what it would look like on your screen if it was its normal size. So this is if you kind of had a paper up there. Um, for right now, let's see if 75 will show. Oh, let's try 50. That's good enough. So we can at least see the whole thing to start editing. So this is the, what did it say? Labor Day sale. Now I've got to make it bigger. Labor Day sale, okay. So what we want to do is let's start up here and we'll just change this. So I just hit um, a hotkey called Command A, which highlights everything in there. So we've we've double clicked, I hit Command A, so it highlights everything, or you can manually drag and highlight everything. And we want to say Labor Day Sale. Um, I'm going to move this in. So these corners pull it in, uh, pull the whole box in together like this, so it stays the same size. Whereas if you grab the sides, it's going to pull it in, you know, just the sides in. So I don't want everything to be right across the edge. So I'm going to move it in. And then let's see if some lines show up. There we go. So that means the dotted lines means that it's centered directly in the element. So it's centered into that blue box. Um, we can make this bold. So I want it to be a little bigger. So we're going to hit the bold again, just like a Microsoft Word that you might be used to using. Um, I'll keep it white, but I'll just show you this is where you can change text colors, for instance. And then let's say we want the background to be a slightly different blue, like maybe we want it to be more of a Norwegian blue. So we can either say we like that one, it's close, or kind of what I showed you before, there's this plus button right here where you can actually, you can type in a color code if you have one. Um, or you can actually just move this around and watch, watch this blue box over here as I move this around. You can actually see what the color looks like. So I'm moving it all around. If I wanted it to be bright pink, I can move this all around. So this is how you can choose different colors and just kind of see what looks good. So let's say that looks good to me. The nice thing is once you've put, once you've used a color, so like, like say this is a color I'm going to use, all the colors will show up on that particular piece that you're doing. So every time you come back to it, that blue color is always going to be saved within the piece. You don't have to match that color every single time. Um, my primary colors will always be there, but the colors from that particular piece of ma the particular material, like the flyer, is always going to be there. So let's change this wording as well. And what do we want here? Why don't we say Norwegian Cruise Lines?
Okay, so I want that to fit in there. So I'm going to highlight it and just make it a little smaller. It's at 69, so let's try 64. There you go, it fits. Uh, also, I want this whole thing to move over a little bit. So one, one trick is like if you can't click on what you want, like when I had that highlighted, I just click off of it and click back on. It's one of the little quirks of, of Canva is sometimes it gets a little hung up if you're in here and I can't, I can't grab what I want. Just click off somewhere else and click back onto it. So I want to move this a little bit to the left. Okay, so we're going to do this and we're going to say, uh, we're going to list everything out. But what we want is bullet points, kind of like how they have bullet points. So they have that option here. We can choose a list and start typing. Unlimited open bar, uh, sure, excursions, specialty dining, Wi Fi, friends and family sale free. Uh, okay, so see how it's kind of moved off the page and you're like, well, how am I going to fit it? So what you can actually do is you can make this picture a little smaller. So what we'll do is we'll just move it up a little bit. Actually, let me, let me redo that. I'll actually drag it up a little bit because once it goes off the top, you won't see it because I don't want to smash the, I don't want to smash the image. I would be very careful about using this and this for images because sometimes it smushes it. Um, it just depends on how it's formatted. And um, we do want to bring it all the way to the edge, though. So now we can move this whole piece up so that everything fits. But we want to move um, we want to move this out of the way, so obviously it's not sitting over it. So another quirk I want to tell you about Canva that sometimes frustrates me, just so you're aware, is a lot of times when things are layered over top of each other, it's hard to grab what you're trying to grab to move. So sometimes it helps to just move it out of the way. I'm going to change the color just so we can see it later. Um, it helps to just move it out of the way so that you can move the thing underneath it. It's. I wish it was a little bit better about being able to select things that are layered over top of each other, but it's just one of the things you kind of have to deal with. So what do we want to say here? Let's say we want this. We'll move it back over top. Let's say we want this to say. Um, oh, how about this? Contact Summer for info. Info. So we can put that there. Maybe we want to like move it a little bit so it looks a little more askew. Um, we want to put it back to white so that you can see it better. We want to make it bold. And it's kind of a little, I would say a little too big, so we can change the change the font a little bit. We're at 28, let's try 24. And again, you, we still want to try and center these. You can, again, I picked a bad color for you to see it, but there are those um, lines that helps you center it in the middle of the element. Even though it's askew, it's still centering the text in the middle of that circle. And let's say we want to try and fit one more thing in here. Um, so let's say on select sailings. Let's see how it kind of moves it out of the way, but we don't want to move this up anymore. Another cool thing you can do is you can adjust the spacing of the element. So, I mean, of the text. So if you go up to spacing here, you can watch the watch the what I've got highlighted. You can change the line height by moving the cursor here. So this will allow you, let's say we want to smush them a little bit more together and that actually helps our everything fit on the page. Or if you think the letters are too far apart or too close, this changes how far apart the letters are from each other. And there's no like rhyme or reason. I honestly just move it until I think it looks good. So that's one thing that you can do is um, change the spacing of the line and the letters. It's just kind of a trick when sometimes you've got a lot of stuff that you want to put on there and it's not quite fitting and you don't want to make the text smaller, you can adjust the line height. Um, but we are going to move this up a tad. Okay, so we want to change this color to match our blue. See, the blue is still there. Um, another thing you can do is like, let's say we don't want 
this image because we're not going to Iceland or Norwegian, we're going on a cruise. So this is where you can either search for photos. So I'm gonna move this back over here so that we can you can see my full screen now. We can search for photos, let's say cruise ship. Okay, I guess I, okay. So let's say we like this one and we wanna put that one in there instead. See how it popped in there? That's because there is, if I were to delete, if I were to delete this, see how it's got this um, like cartoon image behind it? That's basically a placeholder for a picture. So rather than having to like place each individual picture and size it, you can actually just put placeholders for photos in there. And then we can try this one and put it in there. If we don't like it, we can then put that one in there. You just drag it into her and it changes out for you. So it's really nice because then you can just try different ones. But let's say we like this first one. Um, another thing you can do is if you have a photo that you want to upload. So I know like a lot of different suppliers, cruise lines, tour companies, they have media libraries where you can actually use an image from the from their actual um, like approved images that you can use in your marketing. Uh, one thing I will say, you see how this has watermarks? It's because normally the images cost a dollar. So again, it's very cheap when you download, you do have to have a credit card on your profile because when you download, um, you're gonna pay a dollar for most images, although there are free images. If you want to see only free images, you have to click this free button right here. And there's not a ton of, ton of options, maybe if I make it two words. Yeah, that's probably better. So if you wanted a free image, then we could drag a free image in here. Although I think that's like a rendering, not even a real picture. Um, you can have a free image, but if it's one that you really like, it's gonna have those watermarks until you download it. Once you download it, those watermarks won't show anymore. Um, but again, it's only a dollar, so. Uploads over here on the left is when you can upload an image. So I earlier grabbed an image of a Norwegian ship. No, I put it on my desktop. Uh, but I, of course, but I uh, didn't save it in the right format. So we're gonna use a different one. Let's use cocktail, which is what I used for an invitation recently, just to show you how it works. So you can upload all of your own images. And these are past images that we have used before. Um, so let's say we uploaded that image. Again, if I click on it, it'll put it into the flyer, just drag it into the box and it will already um, populate for you. But like, let's say you don't like how it's cutting off each side. If you click on it, you've got the blue box surrounding it. You can actually, uh, I could flip it. So you can hit flip and it'll like say, I wanna flip it horizontally so that they go the other way. Sometimes if you have an image where something is a lot better on one side than the other, you might wanna flip it. Um, you also can crop. So if you hit the crop button, I can just drag this to where I want. So we see the image on the left and we don't have the image or we don't have the drink on the right. So those are all things that you can do with an image. Um, once you click on something, you'll see up here all the options that you have. So if I were to click on text, obviously it's gonna give me completely different options. If I click on an image, it's gonna give me more things as well. Um, adjust lets you play with all the color contrasts. Um, filter actually lets you choose a filter. So if I wanted it to look retro or I wanted it to be brighter, um, you can play with all these filters and you can you can just hit none if you don't like any of them, but they're kind of fun to click through and play with and see if they fit your, your image a little bit better. So we're just gonna say none for now. So the last thing we probably wanna do is put your contact info here. So let's put a number call 999-111-333 to book today. Um, but like, let's say we want this, this, just this piece to go in the middle, but see how they're all connected to each other. They're all like one big group that moves together. And let's say we want just the phone number to be centered on the bottom. There's this thing up here for grouping. So if I've got an entire element, so all of these things are already grouped together, I can hit 
ungroup, and now they are three separate elements, and I can move this to the center. So I want to line it up, so I want to move that to the center. And what you can also do is you can highlight, so you have to hold your, your mouse down and drag across everything you want together, so these three, and you can hit group, and now you can move that whole element together again. So just some uh, like little tricks. And again, you're going to have to get used to this and play with it. Um, it's going to be a little frustrating at first just because a lot of times you'll grab the wrong thing. <laughs> um, so that's what I would kind of encourage you to have some patience with is um, grabbing how you grab things just because that gets a little glitchy. And also, if you're having trouble like typing in something small, remember you can adjust the, the zoom here and get, I can get, you know, really close as I'm typing in this one to make sure that I've I can get in there. Um, and then you can always go back and see what it looks like as a whole. So that is, um, you know, how, basically how you make a flyer. Let's change this color though, because I don't like it. And let's see what it looks like in more of a water color, like a teal. Mm, let's do this one. So imagine this were a cruise ship. We'll go back to photos and put in a cruise ship uh, of some kind, because that'll look better. There you go. And it's a little too high, so let's crop it, pull it down. Well, we can't pull it down. So that's what you're also going to run into sometimes is in because these are the limits of the photo, obviously you can't pull it down because there's nothing there. But what you can do is actually make, you can zoom in on it so that you can have it more centered. So just play with the cropping. You'll, you'll get the hang of it. Um, what's going to be inside this bright area is what's actually going to be um, in the image. So that's a flyer. There's just a few more elements I want to show you. Um, like, let's say we don't like this circle. So let's just delete it. You can also add other shapes. So under elements, um, there are a lot of different op options under elements. So it's going to show you their, what you recently used. See how we used that palm tree recently. Um, grids, this is kind of a cool thing. I'll just, I'll show you. I'll click on all and show you. So this is the placeholders. So if you wanted to put instead of this here, you let's delete that again because this will delete the placeholder. If you wanted to put three images in instead of one, you can actually do this, size it to the size that you want. And now you can put three images here instead of one. But keep in mind, a problem we have now is this because it's the last element that we entered. Um, or the last element that we put on, see how it covers all the stuff in the background? No problem. Um, you can click on the element that you want. So right now this is a big group, so it's gonna do everything together. And you actually can click on position and you can move it all the way to the back or you can move it backwards, which moves it one layer at a time. So we'll just say to back and see now it's behind everything. So if you get freaked out because you put something on and it's covering everything, just play with the positions until you get it behind what you want and in front of what you want. So now we can move it forward and it's only going one layer forward. So it's only going one layer and it's still showing the, the uh, text. We hit forward again, it's gonna cover that layer, forward again, it's gonna cover that layer. But we want it all the way in the back. So that's one thing. Um, you just hit the X to get out of grids. See, it's got grids right here, hit the X. And you'll be able to see a chart. So this is ever if you're making, uh, I don't know why you'd be making a chart, but if you need to make a chart, you can do that here. Um, different frames. So it's similar to grids where there's a placeholder, but it's just sort of like fun shapes. So if you wanted to like put a, a picture of, like if you wanted to have a computer and then you wanted to look like there was a, an image inside the computer, that's what these are for. So these are just like, same as the grids where there's a placeholder, these aren't showing up right now just because my computer is slow at loading, but it's the same thing. It's got a, this like fake cartoon scenery within all these. So these are just kind of fun, fun um, things that you can play with. And then shapes. So we didn't like the circle. Maybe we want one that has a little more character. So we're going to use this one. And we'll use this instead. Again, we're just moving it around, changing the shape till it fits. It's in front of our text, which we don't want. So it's highlighted. Let's move it backwards one until we get what we want. And now it's behind it. 
change the color to something better. Let's try orange this time. So we can change. So there's all of these shapes. So you can play with all of these shapes um, and you can change the colors of all of them. So when it's solid like this, you can change the color. When it's a frame, when it has this uh, scene in the background, that's where it's a placeholder for an image. So just keep in mind the difference between frames and shapes. Same thing um, with all of these elements and you can kind of play with them, but like it's just different forms of lines if you want to add in. Um, like if it was uh, the price got cut, for instance, like let's say this said, you know, $7.99 and now it's been cut to uh, $4.99, you could put the $7.99 here and put like a big X through it. Um, that would just be like a reason to use a line or if you're separating things in your in your flyer. So again, just play with these and play with moving them around. Let's go back to elements. Sorry, you got to hit the X. I, I forget this all the time. And so basically these are different icons. It doesn't really help in my opinion to use like to go through all of these and just click on all because there's so many of them like travel and hotels. There's going to be so many. The easiest thing is when you're in elements to search for like we search for the palm tree, just search for an illustration. Um, we're almost through kind of all the things that you can do, but um, remember how we can change the font. If you click on um, the text, you can change the font here, but also you can um, change the layout of the text. So what's really nice is um, I'm just going to delete this for right now. If I wanted to put in a heading, like a, I could just put in a heading. If we just want to type, highlight it, type anything here, we can do that. Or if you want something a little fancier and you don't have this whole, all of these elements, we want to delete the whole group. You can pick one of these kind of like preset uh, preset text lockups. So lockup is how they basically sit together. So if we like this instead, then we can come in here. It's already an element together and we could type in Norwegian cruise lines and we'll just move it slightly so it fits or we could also change the font to be a little bit smaller so it fits. 48, yeah. And you can start typing things in here. So the text just allows you to just put in text anywhere you want, or you can look through, again, they have so many. Um, and even within these, if you like the lockup, but you don't like this font, you just highlight, highlight all the font and choose something else, uh, like this, for instance once it loads. Okay. Norwegian Cruise Lines. I wouldn't recommend that font, but you see what I mean. Um, another thing to keep in mind is that some fonts will make are bigger than others. So just because the size fits with one font, if you make it a bigger font, you might have to still come up here and change the size. That one's a little smaller than what we had, so I'll make it bigger um, so it fits in there. All right, so we've gone through elements, which are, are grids, which are placeholders for images. Frames, which are kind of fun placeholders for images. Shapes, which you can change the colors of. Um, lines, gradients is just all sorts of different things that you can put in here to change the gradient. Um, and basically what you would do is if you put this in here, you can choose the two colors. So it would go from, let's say, a dark blue to a purple. Oh, sorry, dark blue, you would change the other color to a purple and it changes the gradient. So these are just like fun design elements. Um, but I would actually say like what I really want to stress to you is the templates because this is all stuff that you probably would do once you're a little, a little more experienced, um, once you've had time to play with it. The easiest thing at this point is honestly just to pick, pick one that you like. I'm going to replace it. Pick one that you like, replace the image, replace the text, maybe change the colors. Um, and in the beginning, like, don't get too crazy. Um, just highlight the text, change it, highlight the image, drag a new one in, um, highlight the colors and change it. 
and that'll make your life a lot easier. You can literally make a flyer in like five minutes if you just have a template that you really like. And you don't have to use both of these. This would be front side and this would be back side. So if you wanna make a back side, if you click on this, it will replace it. What you wanna do is add a new page because you're gonna need a front page and a back page. So you would hit this and it would add another page. Um, we're almost out of time. So just a couple of little tips I wanna give you um, and then we'll kind of see if you have any questions is if I don't like this, I can hit delete. Let's say I wanna test two colors and I'm not sure which I like better. You can hit this copy page button and now you've got one and two. And let's say, let's change this color. See how it highlighted the text? I wanna highlight the uh, background. So another thing you can do is if I'm on here, I can hit command on your computer and then click on it and it will kind of move to the one behind it. Um, so we want to change this color to a navy. And that way we can go between the two, see which one we like better. Okay, we like the blue better, so we'll delete the orange. So it's a way of doing some edits and comparisons without having to remake the entire thing. Uh, photos, elements, text, background is just, uh, it's got, if you don't wanna use a color background, it's just kind of crazy backgrounds. I pretty much never use that. Um, and this says Labor Day sale. If we go back to home, it should show up for us in our designs. Yep, so it's saved. Um, so we've got our logo we can go back into, we've got our flyer we can go back into. If you ever wanna delete it, you can move it to trash. Um, if you want to move it to a folder, this is how you have folders. Um, and if the folder doesn't exist, you can create one. So that's usually how I do it. If I wanna make a new folder, I'll just say new folder, click on it, adds new folder, and it creates the folder for me. Um, so yeah, I think that's, I know that's a lot of information. I just kind of wanted to show you what is possible with Canva and kind of where all the elements live. And really it's a matter of playing around, um, but just keep in mind, there's nothing that's, you're not gonna ruin anything, right? So you can always just um, play around. You can always undo um, things. So you can do Command Z. I don't know if you know this, but on Command Z on your computer, um, that will, undo what you just did. You can hit it as many times as it'll let you undo. So if I deleted this and I hit Command Z, it'll bring it back for me. So keep that in mind. Um, and then I've shown you the download. So this is your download button. You would choose your file type. Uh, very easy. You can change the name. If you want to resize it, this is one of the things where I was saying um, you, I think you need Pro in order to, uh, to do a magic resize, which is where you would choose, like if I wanted to make this a Facebook post, I could copy and resize and it would make, I'd still have this, but it would make a copy of it and put it into the, the size of a Facebook post and then you could edit it. And now all of a sudden I have a Facebook post, not that I recommend this one, but you'd have a Facebook post, <coughs> excuse me, that now matches your creative. Oh, sorry. Need a drink of water. Okay, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> Getting over a, a cold. <coughs> Sandy, if you wanna ask the question, you can. <laughs> okay, hope you're okay, Summer. Um, you've been uh, doing a wonderful demo. I can understand why uh, you're losing your voice or coughing. Um, we have several questions. I'm going to ask you a couple of them that were asked the most often because we're getting short on time and we want to leave uh, some time for the prize giveaway. Um, so uh, uh, you've been um, doing a lot of um, putting together of flyers and um, and brochures and whatnot. How much of what we have seen here today is in the free version and how much is in the paid monthly pay version? Yeah, um, sorry, I've had a cough for a whole week, so it's, <coughs> it's getting to me, but the main, <coughs> the main elements are gonna be the resizing, the saving of your colors, and then you'll see there are some elements when you download, like if we do PNG, 
you'll see the pro options. That's these pro options. So normally when it's a pro option, you'll see like a little um, crown next to it. So the, but the major things are saving your colors, a couple of the download options and resizing. Okay, uh, great, thank you. Um, let's see, oh, um, several agents have asked if they're creating a brochure or a flyer for a specific um, supplier and they are using that supplier's color scheme, is there any kind of copyright infringement they need to be aware of? Well, you're always, <coughs> I'm so sorry. You're gonna wanna look at usually the supplier will have their like rules basically for using their images. So just read through what you're allowed to do with it. It'll, it'll depend from supplier to supplier. The one thing you do not wanna do is just go to Google, find an image and download it. Then you're gonna run into copyright rules. The nice thing about using Canva's images over here is that they're either free or everything that you have, you can pay a dollar for, for each image or element. Um, and then you're guaranteed to be able to use it. So a lot of times you can just use images like stock images. Um, if you want a really specific one from a supplier, then just check the rules they have on their media library. Okay, great. And uh, is there a help function on the Canva program for uh, telling, uh, making suggestions or if someone wants to find out how to do something? So there is, I believe it is support.canva. Let me just see. I don't use it very often. So .canva.com. Let's see. It's either help or support. Yep. So if you go to support.canva.com, you can type in answers here. Um, you do get more personalized support if you sign up for the pro version. Okay, excellent. Um, uh, if we didn't get to your question or if you think of a question after this webinar is over, uh, Summer, what's the best way for our agents on this uh, webinar to get more information about the Canva.com program? Yeah, I would say just send me an email. Um, it's S-C-O-R-B as in boy, I-T-T -T, at uniglobetravel.com. Um, so basically the first letter of my name and then my last name. And the one thing I would keep in mind, um, this is the only plug I'll do, uh, just keep in mind that if you are with Uniglobe, um, our agents basically have this resource free. Um, I actually help all of our agents with this. So I've worked with our agents and actually done a share with them. So I can edit the flyer if they're having trouble. Um, and I work with our agents on Facebook ads. So as part of Uniglobe Travel Center, um, I kind of work with one-on-one -on -one coaching for free to help you build all of this and build your Facebook Facebook ads as well. Okay, great. And could you um, give your email address again, please? Mm -hmm. It's S-C-O-R-B-I-T-T -T at uniglobetravel.com. Okay, excellent. Um, so again, Summer has very generously offered to um, answer your questions if you want to email her. Um, we've gotten a lot of comments, as you'll see, Summer, about what a wonderful presentation this has been and what a great job you did. Um, so let's quickly get to our prize giveaway because we're almost out, out of time. Uh, Summer and Uniglobe are offering a $50 gift card. And the way this is going to work is that um, Summer, if you're able to, otherwise <laughs> I will, but Summer will ask a question about something that she talked about during this webinar and um, type in your answer in the question question area, I will take the fifth correct answer. I see come across my screen and of course we'll pass your contact information along to Summer and she'll get in touch with you about redeeming your gift card. So again, I'll take the fifth correct answer. Summer, go ahead and ask your question. Yeah, so um, what is the paid version, the $12.95, what's the paid version of Canva called? Okay, we have lots of answers coming in. Okay, we have a winner. <laughs> Thank you to everyone who typed in your answers. The correct answer, the paid version, is called Canva Pro. And our, wi our winner today is Deborah Kay. Deborah Kay, so congratulations, Deborah, for winning the $50 gift card. We will pass your information along to uh, Summer for um, her to get in touch with you about your prize. 
Uh, this has been wonderful. Our host today has been Uniglobe Travel Center, and our wonderful speaker has been Summer Corbett, Sales and Marketing Manager for Uniglobe. Summer, thank you so much. This has been terrific. Thank you. I appreciate you guys <clears throat> sticking with me, and I'm very sorry for the <laughs> coughing fit. It's been something I've been fighting for about a week, but at least we got through the important stuff before I lost it. <laughs> we do. We got through 99.5% of it, so you did a great job. Uh, I want to thank our agents for taking time out of your busy day to join us today. I know you got a lot out of this, and, um, and I know that uh, you'll be taking a look at canva.com to see uh, all the wonderful features. So thanks again. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.